50. And TLPH, honestly, they always take it with a pinch of salt, right? They're very, very strategic when they do so. They try to skew the odds as much into their favor as possible. But that's the complete opposite for CFU Gaming. If there's an angle, it's going to be an incredible looking angle. The last time they met, full of plays, full of action. And this best of three should be not that. Well, I would assume that it's going to be the same. But then again, the patch could change it up. Yeah. And of course, you know, today's days, you know, even yesterday as well, it's all about the sky pierce. Personally, I'm a big fan of the Thunderbolt, which I think no one has actually picked it up as well. Same goes for the, the, the Clock of Destiny because of the elegant gen changes coming into the, the game itself. So I don't know, like, when am I going to see some of this? Because so far, it's always been the Assassins being the highlights here. But speaking of which here, we do see the Moscow ban. No Roger ban yet coming from CFU Gaming here. So that means Team Liquid Page will be able to steal it away from CFU. Very standard opening coming in from TLPH. They want Benny QT to win out in his lane as hard as possible, and then they're going to play through uh, from there. But it does mean that the rest of TLPH will have to incorporate a lot more damage into their composition to make sure that Benny QT's job is a lot easier, right? Win the lane, and after that, take out targets below 50% AP. Yep. Loyi being banned means they will be securing two of the power picks here coming to CFU Gaming here. They have Valentine as well as the Eater too. Very, very uh, flex. I, I wouldn't say flexible here. We, occasionally, we do see a gold lane Valentina, but Personally, I think this is pretty much done for a mid lane for CFU. But for Team Liquid PH, they picked the Arlot as well as the Farsa. So what is going to be able to get through here? Paquito is out. Ling is still out as well. Uh, if you want to talk about Sky Pierce, so I think Ling it's, isn't too bad of a pick here for CFU right now. I think that Yuzong is also pretty good mm -hmm. for CFU as well because that has been their mainstay as their spearhead to a lot of these engagements. Even if it doesn't look good, he will find his targets. But I, I think that the adjustments that we've seen from TLPH is pretty good as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because now that Sanji doesn't get access to Valentina, stolen away by CFU, CFU Gaming, at the very least, now you have a mage that doesn't necessarily need to participate in the fights, right? Just get the artillery down, make sure that you don't get knocked up or uh, CC it out of the Feather Airstrike from the Edith, and generally you'll be okay. But CFU Gaming opt to go into the quad just so they have extra mobility and maybe a counter to this Farsa. Hmm. Okay, they're going to be picking up their Mark Spencer's and the Tan completely ignored from both sides. We saw a couple of nerfs here and there. Baxia being banned, Terisla being banned as well, which means Yu Jong is going to be up for grabs. But it, it feels like CFU is in a situation where they still want to play a very sustainable comp. Like, they don't really want to deal with the deep Baxia. But uh, are we going to see the Barats here for CFU? I don't think we're going to see the Barats just yet. I think a lot of teams have steered away from the Barats generally because, again, it's strong in the earlier stages of the game. Well, actually, now that I'm seeing these bands come yeah. through, we are seeing... I haven't seen a Julian ban just yet, okay. but we have seen the Frederick ban and as well as the Boxia. Really want to limit down Carl Tizzi's, uh playing playmaking capabilities, or at the very least, setup mechanics. Minotaur is still out in the open, very classic for JP, of course. But let's see how CFU Gaming approach this, right? Because if they pick up Yuzong right now, that kind of predetermines what their comp is going to look like, and we still don't know what their jungler is going to be. Hmm. I don't know. I, I feel like this Barad's pickup is something that they're trying to lean on in case they go for tank junglers for Team Liquid PH as well, right? Like, Ling Ban, okay, very, very smart coming from them. Uh, it means that they have to pick either an assassin jungler or a tank, but they pick the clue. Okay. Uh, yeah, very peely, very peely composition. Uh, okay. When it comes to the glue here, I, I saw a couple of changes coming into play. Uh, you you called out the Julian. I, I feel like this glue isn't exactly that super strong here if you know how to kite, uh, kite it around, right? Like maybe you can take advantage of the elegant gem. Maybe you can take advantage of, of Thunderbelt if you decided to go for a little bit greedy here for CFU gaming. Mm -hmm. But I like Team Liquid PH just drop out just because of this Julian pickup. Uh, I mean, it's a classic draft. Other than the fact that there's Julian in the composition, I think you know Carl TC is finally coming back and realizing, hey, it's time. Coach Tic Tac says yes. On, uh, on the Julian, I'm going to try my best to make it happen. Because again, with this Julian, it, it goes both ways for CFU, right? As much as Edith is really good at dealing with the Julian, there's a very good chance that with the new Warcry uh, Emblem spell, mm -hmm. Emblems, Holy cow, he does so much damage in the earlier stages of the game. Especially once a Holy Crystal is complete. Man, you gotta be real careful. But see if you game and opting to go for the Mardis, another potential Warcry user here. This will be interesting, right? Because we haven't seen people really break too far out of the tech besides the Sky Piercer. Okay. Um, personally, I think maybe towards the later stage of the game here, Julian might actually go for the Wishing Lantern, right? Because 
Oh, the fact I that don't think so. I, I, I don't think it's kill. worth his time. Really? Yeah, yeah, I really don't think it's worth his time. He's just going to get really, really greedy. He's going to go like Genius mm -hmm. Wand. Uh, Genius Wand, if he has plenty of money, instantly go into second item, Holy Crystal. Okay. Worst comes to worst, we go into the traditional build of like Genius into, uh, what's it called? Feather of Heaven, maybe, just yeah. to get the extra auto attacks. But then again, it really comes down to what Carl Teasy's style of play with Julian is. Is it all about those one shots, or does he want to incorporate oh, yeah. the auto attacks inside of it? Now, now that you mention it as well, it, it, it might be actually going for the Scythe here coming from Julian. Exactly. Uh, Right. And, and like, like it just gives you more va value in terms of auto attack, right? Like mm -hmm. you can give the glowing wishing lantern to the Farsa, exactly. Just, just because it's like what it's easy for a Farsa to proc 800 damage to proc the 10. percent Now here's the thing, right? The big question is whether or not Carl Tz is gonna go for the Sky Piercer. I think there's Oof. a good chance that he will, and if okay. he goes for the Sky Piercer, there's a good chance he might consider glowing wand as well. If the frontline tanks or Martis is just a little too much to deal with. But for now, let's get right into this game. TLPH on the blue side. Kaltizi on his purple buff. Up against CFU Gaiman. Detective on his own mirrored purple buff. Well, it is going to be a revenge match for Team Liquid PH, right? Like, they have to win this 2-0 if they want a chance for the LCQ call, right? See, if they lose here, they're out of the tournament. This, and this is MPLP champion we're talking about. Yeah. And, uh, Okay. Interesting. So the Julian setup that Carl is going for, he's going to make sure he's going to have some extra attack speed. And he's also going for the quantum charge. Rather interesting. I would have expected him to lean more towards Benny QT's build. Uh, not the Master Assassin, but at least with Warcry. Well, speaking of Witcher, uh, Detective Hero is going to be able to steal a crap up top. So that's going to be a little bit gold name. But Carl TZ finds first blood down bottom right from the get-go. So this is a good start for Team Liquid PH. Beautiful stuff coming up from Samford, right? Sets it up with the stuns, enhanced size to make this work. Enhanced chains doesn't connect onto Z, doesn't have enough mana, but uh, you can just see how dangerous Julian is in the early game if somebody can set up uh, a perfect enhanced scythe for you. Well, speaking of Witcher, he does have the mobilities as long as he casts the right spells. In this case, bomb lane here, we see Sanford getting a very confident against this glue here. We know there are changes on the glue, but it seems like it doesn't really affect the lane that much. But let's see the instant replay on what happened down bottom oh. here. Very, very good setup. They even forced out the flicker on Wadu. That's nice. Interesting. So we just chained CC'd Wadu to death. Didn't go for the enhanced size. Opted to go for enhanced chains. Here we go. Next fight. Oh, here, JP getting chain stun all the way. True CFU Gaming is able to find a nice pickoff to set up for this turtle. Kalkizi in the vicinity hasn't really checked here, but he's gonna try and poke on Obi right now as they try to go for a little bit more of Kyo Turtle. Feathered Airstrike comes in. Sanford instantly cancels oh! it off and sets up the Feathered Airstrike, destroying them. Gets a kill, gets a turtle, and now Obi, he needs to run and he cannot do so. He flickered on the wall. And now Wadu with the split split here, he's gonna try and pull somebody back, but can he do so? Nah. No! He gets counterplayed by Kao Tizi with the end of hand swords, and now Wadu in very, very big trouble. He needs to get out, but he cannot do so. What a play by Kaltizi. God, it feels so good watching the GOAT play the damage dealer once again. Benny QT, there's no way he loses this lane, especially with the Warcry already proc. Look at how much damage. Oh, wait! Wait, wait, Benny? Oh, he whiffed. Benny? Oh, no. Oh, okay, he okay. whiffed the most important ability. Now it's an even trade. Oh, they were so close there. Coming from him here. OB very close to the fall. He's looking for the primal round setup as well. He's going to try and get it as well. But here comes a bit stolen oh. mid not range by oh. JP. And the Feathered Air Strike to turn the tide. They get completely boom. shut down. The Minone Rage from JP. Oh, what a outplay coming from Team Liquid. Beautiful stuff coming in from Sanji, though, right? I mean, his damage, he knows when his passive is up, and he's like telling JP, I'm about to get it in about two more seconds. Just go in. We can get a mega trade here. And he finds it. Six and one currently. Three minutes, 30 seconds into the game. One of the bloodier games that we've seen today. My goodness, Sanji was so close to not having enough mana for that combo, right? It was so effective in that scenario here. But at the same time here, based on itemization, they're all getting a little bit greedy here because it seems like they're all going full damage build. I mean, everybody is excited to be using the new items like Sky Piercer. First item rush for Benny Cutie just to create an advantage, not only in lane, but when he walks out of there. Oh, 6% lethality up on Roger right now without any stack. So he needs to start get it, getting some kills here. But Kaltizi, looking trying to set up once more to try and get a kill on Wadu, who's currently getting bullied out of the lane by Sanford, two levels behind on the XP lane. Not looking good for uh, Wadu down bottom here. I mean, just goes to show how volatile the EXP lane is. See if we now have first move on this turtle. Oh, 
you know what? Rage comes in. He's gonna go for the jump header. Ezra comes in. They get one kill. Turtle also secured. But the stolen Minori is gonna try to reset this. But Sing from behind gets a free blaze. Went, but the Sky Piercer just one shot at someone. And now Benny QT looking to try and finish off the rest here. Four down from CFU. Wadu will have to tuck his tail and run away. Tries to secure the purple buff. But Kaltizi is here. He's looking to try and set up for the team here. Sanford is there. But I don't think they have damage he needs to run away. Sanford still holding on. He's getting peeled away slowly but surely. But he will be able to get out away. But the side... Ooh. Kyle Teasy. I just... Mean, ouch. He's, he's dangerous. He's real dangerous right now. And you can hear me just counting in the background how many seconds he has, right? Every single time he uses an enhanced ability, start counting from seven downwards. Because no matter what, you can't change that cooldown. And that's the window that CFU have to take advantage of. Without an enhanced ability, or at least once it's been used, you can really punish this Julian. And that's what a lot of professionals have done when Julian was first introduced in the meta. But considering everything, right? TLPH, they're playing a high tempo composition, heavy around the snowball, plenty of damage so that Betty Cutie can finish them off. And even without Betty Cutie, they're still plenty dangerous. Yeah, but uh, speaking of danger here, CFU, they're now 4K network behind Team Liquid. Just six minutes game. What a huge lead secured by Team Liquid PH right now. And they're just gonna continue to snowball. Look at Kaldizi. Like, he doesn't really care is, if it's XP lane or not. He's just gonna be in your jungle, in your face. Absolutely. He's not prioritizing these objectives because how the Lord of Dance has changed. Oh, but Seal Play comes in from CFU. They are gonna try and make a counter play. Minion's Rage catches the back lines, but did they have the damage because JP has got a one or his own. Benny QT looking to try to get the Punisher kill. He's got a oh. kill. And Kaldizi was able to interject on the side. Arlong with the final slash to set things up. Benny QT. Double kill for him once more. Three kills in the back. Three stacks for the Punisher. God, it feels so good to play Roger right now, especially when you have a team that just honestly force feeds you these kills sometimes. You don't have a choice. You better take it. You got Sky Piercer. I ain't wasting the extra auto attack. Really good stuff coming in from TLPH. And I think that CFU game is committing a little too hard to a lot of these plays. Oh no, Zing is going to be trapped. Ball plays into it. Comes in. BMI doesn't even matter. Ben UQT gets another stack of lethality. Sky Piercer. And I think that's what? 10% right now? I think he's... Uh, is he max? Four kills. Max, four kills. No. Yep, that's 10%. My goodness, 10% of your health and you drop like a fly and it's only 7 minutes of the game. How much HP can you even get there? No, I mean, it really doesn't matter because CFU Gaming, they don't have the Econ to actually sustain, right? A majority of their damage, sorry, a majority of the defensive items going into Radiant Armors here. A lot of MR, I'm not seeing a lot of armor. Okay, OP dropping down to his half HP here. Benny QT doesn't want to try and make a tem here. Wadu mm. gets the information, but they have to disengage right now. CFU is just too weak to contest any of this. Oh my goodness, they're struggling to get far better. Astra tries to zone them off. Z dropping down towards half HP. It, all they need is just a jump by Banner QT and his done for now. They're gonna commit the minion's range. You're also low, and here it comes. Benny QT gets a double tap, double kill for him. Looking for the triple. It's so close. Can he proc the lethality? <laughs> it's so close, but no, Sanford will die, but Benny QT will say it's okay. I got you. I got you, my boy. I swear to God, I bet Sanford is screaming at his team, Just kill me! Kill this glue! Get him <laughs> off of me! And Benny's like, I'm sorry, dude. I have to make this happen. It's like, I get it. I get it, you know? Unfortunately for Sanford, he did go down in the engagement, but you can just see how TLPH, as long as they're making the first move, CFU Gaming just don't have the HP to sustain that type of damage coming in from Sanji now that he's already completed two full items. Lightning Trudgeon as well as the Bloodwing. He is so strong. Oh no, Retri, they missed it. Oh, okay, he doesn't want to commit to this fight right now. Obi tries to go for a commitment here. Use the primer up to disengage, but guess what? Ben QT, he's chain stun. He Why needs to he... flicker away. Sanji gets the kill for him instead. Wadu now try to go for the split split. Can he get out? Yes, he can. Sing will be able to trade the tier one down bottom, but aside from that, the rest of the team for CMU are getting torn apart. Benny QT looking for one. He's gonna look for another. Here he comes, and he's got a triple once more. Benny QT, 10 kills into the game. Nine minutes in, 21 for TL. 
Oh. PH. That bot side, you see Carl Tizzi in that 1v1 against the quad, and right now he's just focused on the waves, right? The rest oh, of his no. team, they're about to end the game. This, this is endable. OB now, he's Damn. gonna die. Another lethality. Legendary for Benny QT. Game's over. Game's over. Fastest game I've seen today. Nine minutes, 30 seconds. Thumbs up from Samford. Approval 